Given f of x equals the square root of 2 minus 4x and g of x equals negative 3 over x, we need to find g composed with f at x and then the domain of g composed with f at x in interval notation. Okay, so composite functions. I know that this is a composite function because I see this type of notation. Also, as we go down to memorize this, me personally, I do not like this type of notation. I prefer to use this type of notation. It just makes it easier to see what's going on. They are equivalent to each other. So I'm just going to first, actually, I don't think we're going to need that much space for this one. So I'm going to put A over here and I'm going to say G composed with F at X is the same thing as, now take note, the first one that they say is the outer function. The second one is the inner function. So I'm going to say g of f of x because this is the outer and the f function is the inner. Okay. Now, composite functions is basically a fancy way of saying you're taking two independent functions and you're meshing them together to get one single answer out. Now, with composite functions, always work from the inner function to the outer function. When I mean inner and outer, I'm talking about the ones that are the innermost in the parentheses and the outermost parentheses. You always work from inner to outer. So with this notation, the inner function is the f of x. Literally, the f is in these parentheses. The g is on the outside. So for the first thing we're gonna do and look down here again, we're going to plug in the input, usually a number, for the inner function and solve. However, they just gave us an x and an x and an x, right? So I don't have any numerical value, but I'm just going to say what it says over here. It just, it just says f of x. Okay, well, what was f of x? Oh, f of x was just the square root. The square root of 2 minus 4 can't really, you know, simplify this. So I'm just going to leave it like this. But what's going to happen is this answer, this output becomes the input for the outer function. And that's what it says over here. Use that output. It's now an input that we just solved for and plug it into the outer function. And the outer function here was the G, whoop, was the G function. And now I'm just going to plug in what I'm solving for now, it's the square root of 2 minus 4x, which means that for the g, val g function, whenever I see an x and I only have one here, I'm just going to replace it with the square root of 2 minus 4x. Um, yes, so I'm going to let this equal, and the g function was negative 3 over the square root of 2 minus 4x. Now I'm going to put a star here because technically when you simplify, you should, definitely, you should always try to simplify, but always when you're doing your domain and your interval notation, you always do that from the unsimplified version. It just makes it easier, all right? But I look here, I mean, I can't really simplify this, um... I can, I can pull out a 2, but I mean, it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So uh, for my answer for letter A, I can say that g of f of x, which is the same thing at g composed with f at x, is negative 3 all over the square root of 2 minus 4x. Okay. So A is done. Let's just... Box it off in fancy colors and move on. Okay, so now we have to take this function and we have to perform the domain test and we have to find the domain in interval notation. Okay, so whenever we're doing domains, we have to think of the exclusion values, numbers that don't fit the function because then the function would uh, not be solvable. It would be undefined. So there's two rules here that you should know. You should know that with square roots, you cannot, so I'm just going to say something here, right? You cannot 
be a negative value. You can have zero up until any positive number, but the number inside cannot be equal to a negative value. Okay, the second exclusion that you should be aware of is anything in a denominator. For a denominator, the key here is that you can have negative values. That's a check. You can have positive values. That's another check, but you cannot have anything equal to zero. So, looks like we got double whammy here, right? I have a square root, so I have to be cognizant of the first exclusion, and I also have a denominator, so I have to be cognizant of the second rule as well. So, I'm gonna go with the fraction first because I know that I cannot have the fraction being equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the denominator, which was the square root of two minus four X, and I'm gonna set it to zero. I'm gonna solve for X because in that case, whatever X is, I know that it can't be that value, right? Because the denominator cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so let's go. Uh, if we want to get rid of the square root, the inverse of a square root is squaring something. And bye-bye, that goes away. But remember, you just got to be fair. So you got to take the zero and square it technically. But zero squared is just zero. So now I have two minus four X. Solving, I like to work with positive uh, values. So I'm just going to move the four X over. So it'd be two equals four X divide by four you get x equals um, 2 over 4, which is the same thing as 1 over 2, right? But technically, that's equaling it to 0. So I know that x cannot equal 1 half, because if it does, the denominator is going to be equal to 0, and that's a bad thing. No, no. So we got one piece of the puzzle here. Okay, now if this... If x equals an, uh, one half, right? That's going to equal zero. That's it. That satisfies the first thing. But remember, for a square root, I can't have anything less than zero because I can't have any negative values. So I found the cutoff being x equals one half. Could I have anything less than one half being put into this function? Absolutely not, because then I would get a negative value, and square roots cannot be negative. So, my x value has to be greater than one half. It cannot be greater than or equal to, because then the denominator would be equal to zero. So I know, after all is said and done, it has to be greater than one half. Now I just have to write this into interval notation. This is my starting value. So I'm going to say, okay, I have a one half and I can go all the way up until infinity, right? Any other number greater than one half is cool. But now do I put brackets here or do I put parentheses? The answer is parentheses because you need to exclude this. It cannot be equal to one half. What about on the other side for infinity? This I have to exclude as well, parentheses, because infinity is just a theoretical concept. It doesn't really exist. So we have to exclude that value. And this is your domain. So there are your two answers, this or this. It's the same thing. That is the actual composite function. And this is your domain of that composite function. Okay, so guys, Thank you so much for tuning in. This was fun. Hopefully you guys got down your composite functions, your domains. Let me know in the comments what you think. I uh, love to hear from you guys. And if you want to subscribe, click the subscribe button. But if not, hey, that's okay. All right. Thanks for watching anyway. I will see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.